You're listening to The Self-Disruption Show on iHeartRadio with Audrey Lawrence. Hacking business, science, and psychology to smash your goals. This is Audrey Lawrence, and you're listening to The Self-Disruption Show on iHeartRadio and WWPR in Tampa Bay or wherever you get your podcasts. I am so excited to share with you today my absolute, I have to say crush, because if you ever had anybody who you just borderline stalk, they're inspiring, they're motivational, they're the place that I go when I want a lift up in my day. I don't know where you go, but I go to one of my favorite programs. Kate Sullivan is here from the show to dine for. Welcome, Kate. Audrey, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be on your podcast. Thank you so much for reaching out. My pleasure. Listen, I am such a crush. I first stumbled on your show. I was in the pandemic with a newborn baby. I can't go to a restaurant. I can't have a conversation with anybody face to face. And I find your show, which is everything that I'm missing in my life. I'm missing great food and great service. And sorry, honey, my husband's great conversation, but with conversation (laughs) with more than just, you know, the people in my four walls and your show was such a respite. How exciting is it for you to travel the world, having the amazing meals, meeting these world-class thought leaders? I mean, do you pinch yourself every day? It really is a dream job. I will say that it is an absolute dream job. It is taken a lot of work to get here. As you well know, um, creating anything is bloody hard. Um, but yeah, it is. I, I created the show because it's a combination of all of my interests and really what I want to say to the world, which is that anything is possible and that I I'm fascinated by the stories of people who've taken an idea from inspiration to execution. And I want to hear how they did it. I know that um, you said that you've watched a lot of the shows and helped incorporate them into your book about ideas for success. And yes, a lot of these people, um, actually all of the guests are incredibly successful, but there's another element beyond their success. And that is they have a vision to help the world in some way. And so to me, that's the ultimate success. It's not just um, financial success. It is not just being able to do what you want and create something. It's being able to have impact. And I think more and more people are interested in their jobs and in their lives in having impact. You know, that brings me perfectly to one of the the top questions I've been kicking around. You know, there's that old adage that we are the common denominator of the five people that we hang out most with. Do you find that this amps up your game? Now, listen, listeners, (laughs) I have to clarify. Kate is a four time Emmy winner. She had a very successful evening news slot in Chicago. I mean, you by no means are a slouch, but do you (laughs) find that this elevates your game by having this association? You know, that's an interesting point. If you can't be around, you know, when you look at the people you're surrounded with and you really want to up your game of the people around you, I think being able to dine with Howard Schultz and Sarah Blakely and Mark Cuban definitely allows me to have these incredible people around me. Um, But for me, it's not necessarily about what they can do to elevate me as much as what I can do to share their story and elevate the listeners and the viewers. We have a pod 50 episode podcast called to dine for the podcast and then the TV show to dine for, which is on PBS and Amazon prime. Um, It's about what can I learn from that guest and share with the world. And um, you know, there's definitely some common threads that follow success, which is what your work is all about. But more than that, I'm also interested in what makes each person different and what makes makes each person unique and how they see the world differently. Um, To me, the more I do these, the more I see common threads, but I also see, try to pinpoint when I go into an interview, what makes this person truly themselves and truly special. And if I can try to in some way, and you can only scratch the surface in a meal, right? You get you get one version of someone's life and, and lives are dynamic and complex and involve a lot. Um, but that's the goal, right? To try to get to the heart of what someone is trying to say to the world and who they are. Wow, to get to the heart of what someone is trying to say to the world. I think it's a question that all of us 
should ask ourselves more often. I find myself sort of, you know, forgetting those important questions such as that and getting lost in. Well, you know, let me tell you, Audrey, I only cut you off because I ask some of the most ridiculously deep questions to my guests. And then when someone asks me one, I have no idea what to say. So I, I it's definitely, um, it's definitely unfair. In fact, I have been writing down some of these deep questions. Like I had just said, like I said, um, what is your value? Like, what do you bring to the table? Like I wrote that, I wrote that um, question down because, you know, in the, in the busyness of life of all of us, what we're doing, right. We, we don't think and stop. What is our value? Like it's a rare person who has the time, energy, strategy, and forethought to actually think through some of these big questions. And we should, I really feel like, you know, to anyone who's building a business or an executive person to take the time, if you don't have an executive coach, um, and I do do, I've been starting to do more executive coaching and media training for people as a side hustle and, and ask themselves some of these questions to really hone in on who they are, what is their value and what do they bring to the world? Because one thing that I will definitely say is common among all the guests is they know their story and they know their value and they know how to articulate it. And I can't say the same, right? It's, yeah, it's very, hard. it's actually hard. Yeah, it's hard. yeah, it is very hard. Yeah, I have to say that, you know, that was one of the sort of curveballs that came my way. And I love my press agent, Jane Westman. I'll give her a shout out. But she sat you down and said, listen, kiddo, know your story in about two seconds if you're going to do a media run. And I'm like, you know, deer in headlights. I think that if we sort of reflect that on ourselves and say, instead of knowing your story into me, I'm sort of, well, you know, I was born and, you know. It's more about knowing what your expectations are for yourself in life. My favorite saying is, what do you want the person at the end of your life to tell the person you are today? What is the takeaway that if you met the person you could be on your last day of life, what would that juxtaposition be? Are you living the dream? Are you going where you're supposed to be going? Are you going to have this rude awakening? Audrey, Um, that's really good. That's really good. I like what you're saying. And because it really, it's, it's like reverse engineering your life, basically starting with the end in mind. What do you want the outcome to be? What is your intention? And then filling in the gaps. So much of, so many of us just start on out on a path and we're not quite sure where we want it to go. And it it shows. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. I see that. And, you know, you sit with a special set of people that maybe their paths meandered. Potentially they bumped into good luck, but ultimately, and I know that I go to the common thread, there's got to be this reoccurring theme of drive or success or failure potentially that bring people to this distilled moment where they say, I'm going to own this destiny. I'm going to move past fear and doubt and questions of self-worth. And I'm just going to own this and I'm going to see where it takes me. And I love what I find in your stories that, that, that becomes revealed where people talk about, you know, these humble existences, these modest starts in life. I love Sarah Blakely's modest start and it blooms into, I mean, gosh, could it have bloomed into anything more than right. she's conquering the world? Um, yeah less about her value of conquering the world and more about distilling that moment where she decided that she was going to push past something, go into a lady's laundry room or washroom, try on a pair of stockings to the Donna Karen producer and say, Hey, see my point. Like, when are you going to be brave enough to try on underwear in front of a stranger in a bathroom? Like, I love that. Like how brave must you be? And what lesson can we take in our own lives for being that kind of brave um, to go out there and claim our destiny. And that's what makes me so curious about the opportunities that of the people you've met. Is there this reoccurring moment where it got really rough in the beginning and then there's this arc of success? What are your thoughts? Is it anything you've sort of sort of walked away saying, hmm, there's this pattern that can be isolated? You mean among the guests that I've yeah. interviewed? Yeah. Or even in your own takeaway, like in your own thought, like what's Kate's version of distilling this down about what it looks like to be a super achiever? No pressure. (laughs) (laughs) Um, A couple of things, you know, there's a lot to this question. There really is, because it isn't, it isn't as simple as it sounds. 
I think first and foremost, I think people need to do a gut check of how hard they're willing to work. And I, it, it, this is some real talk because every person who is quote unquote, I've never used the term super achiever, but it's very good. Um, these are people who are extraordinarily successful and to be a super achiever or extraordinarily successful, you have to be willing to work harder than anyone else. And um, I think people have to do, be real with themselves and do a self-evaluation of how hard they're willing to work and what is their goal. I because um, I think the number one thing that sets every person I've interviewed apart is their ability to grit it out, to grind it out, to have resilience and to not let no's rejection or any problems get in their way. And that is a mindset that is mental, which is what you talk about. And it is something that sometimes it comes from within. Sometimes having nothing, having no money, having uh, no resources is actually your best friend because when you have nothing else, all you have is that amazing goal or that dream, that is what keeps you going. And so you find a way. When you, there is no way, you find a way, you create a way, you pray your way to a way, and you make it happen. And um, I think that you, you can't underscore enough the power of, of having an, an enormous goal and really having the wherewithal to go after it. And I really think one of the things that I know this seems counterintuitive because we think like, you know, when you when just to, to create anything, you got to chunk it out, right? You have a big goal, then you you do create little goals to get there, right? Every every step along the way is how you get somewhere. I think there is actually magic in bigger goals than you can you can imagine yeah. because when you have really big goals, yeah. crazy goals that yeah. you think nobody could achieve yep. that moonshot goals. I call them moonshot goals. They actually create an emotion in them that is so exciting. That is so thrilling. That is so, wow. Imagine if that actually happened, that actually propels you far greater than a small attainable goal. hundred percent. And so that is the kind of um, the magic of thinking big. And you see it over and over again, um, come to life on to dine for, because that's what the show's about. It's about people who do have these enormous goals and how do they achieve them? I'm always interested in where did they fail? Where did they fall? How did they stumble? What was the, you know, on the floor moment that they thought they were going to give up, but they kept going. Um, not everyone has that. Not everyone can articulate that. Sometimes it's too painful to talk about. Sometimes people aren't willing to be vulnerable enough to go there. And I ask it and I can tell, I can see it. You know, having done enough interviews, I can read people in a way that I couldn't read them before I did this show. I really can. I can tell when, when I've asked the question that makes someone uncomfortable. I can tell when they don't like a question. I can tell when to push and when not to. At the end of the day, my my job really on the show is to really be able to bring out their story, but only to the degree that they're willing to tell it. And that's really important. Um, there's a great quote and it's something like, um, we can only meet people as deeply as they have met themselves. Amen. And if you have not done the inner work, you're not going to be able to articulate or excavate the lessons learned along the way. And that is hard because I can tell sometimes when I'm interviewing someone and they're not ready to go there, maybe they haven't figured it out themselves. Um, and I, and I don't, you know, the job of sitting down to a meal with someone is enjoyable. It's fun. It's entertaining. I know going into all of these interviews, they're great stories. I know that they are, I, you know, just by sitting down with this person, I've hit it out of the park. So now what can I bring out of this person? What can, what kind of conversation can we have? Let's have some fun. My job isn't to get out the scalpel and I'm not a psychologist to get to the heart. You know, I, I try to. But I, as I said, it's attention only to the degree that they're willing to communicate it. 
It's such a fun exchange to the listeners. I say it's like watching your best friend from high school interview (laughs) your idol. You just don't know which one you love more. Like it's so engaging. It's so down to earth. It's so beautiful to watch. I always wonder, I'm like, is it hard to eat on TV in front of people? (laughs) Because I'm the kind of person who puts a piece of pizza in her mouth and then has to cover her mouth while she chews. And I would be the whole time going, you didn't get that falling out of my mouth, did you? Like, that would be my big fear. Like, Well, it's so funny. Just before we did this, I was going through a rough cut of an episode of season four that's coming up. And I don't think I've eaten in an episode as much as this one. And I am chewing like the entire show. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I really went to town. And it was a delicious French restaurant in Chicago called Brandy. And it was amazing. And it was worth every bite. But yes, um, you know what? I've lost my kind of self-consciousness of being on TV eating, but the guests haven't. And some guests eat more than others. Like there've been some guests that don't eat anything and I want them to eat, but like you can't force someone to eat. And, and, and some other guests are just like Mark Cuban. He ate every bit of his omelet and he went in, you know, like he could care less eat too. You know, we were great he show. Really like adopted the concept of the show, which is to sit down and eat. Right. So yeah, I'd yeah. be like first date kind of eating. I'd cut the food <laughs> up and not eat anything. I'd be totally afraid. But it's so amazing to see people's posture relax and their shoulders round and then take a deep breath and lean into the table and have those moments that I think are only shared over a good meal. And mm-hmm. you get that softer connection. It's different than any other interview process I've seen out there. And I am lucky mm-hmm. enough to interview people who inspire me like today, like right now. But I think that sharing a glass of wine, a meal with somebody is a level of comfort, a familiarity of who we are, just as we hunch into the table and put our yeah. elbows up, that we get to be sort of more true to who we ultimately are. Absolutely. You couldn't have articulated the concept of my show better than I did. So thank you for that. And that is the goal. It is to connect over a meal. There is something where you let your guard down, where you can really be vulnerable, that you can really share. It's an exchange of ideas. It's not an interview per se, although it's clearly an interview. I I want it to be very, I want it to feel very different for the guest. I want it to feel very different for the viewer. And that's why I say I'm, I'm trying to get at the heart of someone, but I'm doing, I'm trying to do it in a way that is amazing for the guest and not painful. And that's why I say, I I do all that I can to get to the heart of someone, but I can only meet someone as deeply as they've met themselves. So it feels cathartic as the viewer. It has that uplifting takeaway. Does it sit such a juxtaposition compared to being on the evening news? I know you spent years in Chicago on the evening news. Listen, Chicago is a beautiful city. I met my husband there. But I would imagine that doing news has got to have some sort of darker sides compared to (laughs) what it is to, you know, do this most amazing, uplifting, motivational show that you are the executive producer of. Like, how is it those two you know, those two hemispheres. You know, it's funny because um, they're, they're absolutely, they couldn't be, in a way they couldn't be more different. In a way to me, they're very similar. And um, I started this show after I got fired from CBS in Chicago. And I took stock of what I thought I was good at, what I love to do, what I wanted to do in the world, what I wanted to say to the world. And um, the thing is, to me, I produce television and every element of what I liked about my my past life as a news reporter and news anchor, I've actually taken into this. And so people say, um, you know, I miss you on the daily news. I miss you. Are, are you sad to be out of television? I said, well, I'm, to me, I'm very much in television. Not only do I have a show on television, but I am doing everything that I loved about my old job in this job. And then I don't have any of the negative aspect. And there is, there is a lot of negative, as you said, to, to local news, especially in Chicago. Um, I anchored the morning news in New York and I, I was privileged to do the job. I felt very lucky to have done the job and I learned an enormous amount, um, but I do not miss 
the job, if that makes any sense. Absolutely. Do you feel that all of the skills that you learned and captured over all those years, the heartbreaks, the highs and lows, put you primely in this position to take over in the space that you're in today? Absolutely. I think, you know, interviewing thousands of people over ye- over the years in Indiana and in Arkansas, and New York and Chicago, I learned um, that people are the most comfortable when they're talking about something they love. Food is my passion. I know that when someone takes takes you to their favorite restaurant, they kind of come alive and show you a piece of them. We do it. Um, we do the me. We do the conversation and interview at a restaurant for many different reasons, not just because it's my own personal passion, but because it's a storytelling vehicle. Um, I love restaurants in the hospitality industry and really believe it's the heart of the American dream. Anyone from any race, nationality can come to this country and create a restaurant, not even speaking the language, um, but be able to create a business and to do something they love. And I love shining a light on restaurants around the country. It's part of the passion of this program. But at the same time, it's a chance to really share someone's story and a, a slice of who they are. You know, and I, I, Audrey, where are you from originally? I'm from the West Coast, but I'm in New York now. You're in New York. Okay. So if I asked you your favorite restaurant, wherever that is in the country, would you pick a spot in New York or California? Depends on my mood, but probably California. I don't know. Maybe New York. I, I miss tacos. Okay. I miss tacos. <laughs> <laughs> I miss, taco Tuesday. You know, I miss tacos in San Diego, you know, California yeah. tacos. You know, yeah. it's beautiful. And I hear rumor has it that this season four that's coming, that you have interviewed a New Jersey native here, a neighbor of mine, <laughs> who also is a restaurateur, but also a famous singer. Are you disclosing yes, any season four singing guests who have long hair from New Jersey? Not saying. Yes, anything. we were able to interview John Bon Jovi yes. for season four. I know. It's a, it, it was a big get. It was a big get. We were very excited to interview him. We also interview his wife, Dorothea. And um, really, you know, it's not every day you get to sit down with a rock star and we, I did, and it was incredible. Um, And I love, for me, it's about what can the musician, one of the, you know, biggest names in music teach all of us about our jobs, about creativity, about innovation. He takes a singing lesson. He does a singing lesson every day. And you're that good to continue to hone your skill, your craft, I think really says something about what excellence looks like and what success looks like and how to be at the very top of your game. Wow. You have to constantly be working at it. It is nothing. There is nothing that you can just rest on your laurels. You have to constantly be better and trying to be better. And for that with uh, that's, that was my number one takeaway for the, from the John Bond. I'm not even look at, you got me talking about season four. I'm not supposed to be talking about season four, but yes, yes. We have actually have quite a few um, amazing guests on season four. I'm really excited about it. And I also think that the show is taking on a, a, a depth to it and I'm getting even more um comfortable in the role and creating the show and, 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 um, doing the interviews. And I'm, I just, uh, season four is truly one of my favorites. I'm so excited about it. I am thrilled to hear and to see it. Tell our listeners where they can find out more about you, your show and all the venues that they can check it out in. Absolutely. So it will, uh, it, ha- it airs on a PBS stations nationwide. It started last January. The next season will start January, 2022. Uh, that's when season four will drop. If you'd like to watch previous seasons, you can go to Amazon prime. It is free to you. If you were a member, just put into dine for with Kate Sullivan. We have a podcast that's available on all pad- podcast platforms, Apple stitcher also called to dine for the podcast. Um, we do a weekly podcast every single week with uh, luminaries, visionaries talking about great food and how they architected success in their own life. So um, I'd love to connect with you. My Instagram is to dine for TV and to hear more of, of your journey too. I'm always interested in hearing people's career journey and, and also what they just love to eat. I love <laughs> just it. Share what they love to eat. We have to have our listeners call in or message in what they love to eat and where they think Kate should go for the restaurant highlights. We're always interested to hear what our listeners are interested in doing. Drop us a line on Instagram or Kate on Instagram. I'll be sure to link that on the website. Well, gosh, I have to say there's, I could have 
just chew your ear off for hours. But before I go, I have to say that it is the most family friendly, watch worthy show that mm-hmm. we can sit down in front of the TV and I don't have to worry about if my nieces and nephews are in the room, that I have to put it on mute or something's going to pop out that I feel uncomfortable with. It's just such a place for us to huddle around. It's like you're the Shark Tank in our house. It's you and Shark Tank are those two places where we go and we just binge worthy watch. We drool over some food. Everybody wants to know on our team, like what's your favorite food? What's your favorite guest? I said, there's no way she's going to have a favorite guest. She may have a favorite dish and I'll ask that one. But ultimately, like, what's that one piece of information? My favorite question is always the one thing that we should know. What's that? What's that souvenir, Kate, from all of your travels that if we had to just put a feather in our hat and take with us, what would that be? Uh, About the television show. Yes. Whatever you'd like. I think that anything is possible and that if you can dream something up, you can find a way to make it happen. And I know this is possible because some of the guests on the show are the least likely people to have brought something to life of the magnitude and they were able to do it. And to hear a story of how someone did it is really to me just pure magic. And I not, I enjoy hearing the, the story And I really enjoy passing it along and keeping that magic going to all the listeners and viewers. And I hope, um, I hope folks will check out the show. Kate Sullivan, thank you so much for being here. My heart swells thinking about your season four (laughs) and all of this proliferation of positive energy. I want my listeners to tune in and give her a thumbs up and tell her that you stopped by and check out the show. My personal favorites, I could list like all season one and season two plus season three. So now add that to season two. What's your personal favorite? You know what? I liked them all. Um, The ones that, you know, it's funny, the ones that taught me the most about the person was probably Mark Cuban. That was the one I walked away from going, oh, that's not what I assumed he was. And it taught me a lot about making assumptions about people. And I sort of heard my grandmother's voice in my head about, you know, you shouldn't just assume people are going to be what the book tells you. Um, Mm -hmm. I was most inspired by Sarah Blakely. I felt like I wore a cape of success after I watched her show. I just wanted to be superwoman and charge into a room and share my ideas. And it was so motivating for me. It was a can-do story that really resonated deep within me. And I started sharing it with people, even other authors. So it, it has this little drop that creates this ripple effect that I see this swell of energy as you proliferate other people's stories. But ultimately, you become this star catalyst in all of it. That's why I say it's like watching your best friend talk to your idol. You're not sure which one you love more. Like in this case, you've become your own super achieving sort of lane. You've cut out this lane for yourself where you, you know, in my mind, it's I'm not going to do evening TV anymore. I'm going to do something that's uplifting and powerful and, and create this momentous energy and you're leading it. And I just think it's so cool to see. And I'm so happy to have this time today. Thank you, Audrey. I really appreciate it. And what, what you just said made me think of one other thing, you know, not everyone has someone to believe in them. Right. And we all need somebody to like cheer for us. And I think that the power of belief of having that dream and then trying to execute it. And I feel like one of the things that's kind of morphed since I created the show is that I hope this show in its entirety is that person for somebody, you know, for that person who has an idea, but doesn't really have anyone to believe in them. I know that, 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 that this show is that high five, that this show is that you can do it, that it is possible. Like whatever that support that is needed for someone out there, I hope that this show is that. I know that it is. It's certainly been that way for me in my journey. And I appreciate all the things that you've said in the words that have helped shape myself. And I know others. I'm so happy for today. Thank you for your time. Thank you, this Audrey. It's been wonderful. It has been wonderful. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much for your enthusiasm. It's so I wonderful to meet it. you. This is Audrey Lawrence, and you're listening to The Self Disruption Show on iHeartRadio and WWPR in Tampa Bay. Follow us on all your social media outlets and have a great day. 
Thank you for listening to the Self Disruption Show with Audrey Lawrence. To learn more, go to AudreyLawrence.org and follow us on your favorite social media. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Grab your free downloadable gift at AudreyLawrence.org forward slash gift.